It's the bar munching, crisp crunching, knee bumping OSW review here to give you the skinny on AEW Fight Forever. Cheers to the big G fucking us up with two, count them, two codes, which went to V1 and myself. Sorry, OSC, you're out, mate. <laughs> you say sorry, I say fuck you. <laughs> you know? But uh, actually, he wasn't available to record on such a notice, so, you know, he gave us the boot. But we brought in a ringer, our jet flying, we you buying, kids crying, Matt McMuscles. <laughs> I, I take great offense to we you buying. Have that stricken from the record, please. Thank you. <laughs> uh, very happy to be here, guys. And it's great to finally be hashtag all elite. Oh my god, prepare for your DMs to be full of hatred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's kick us off with a history of AEW Fight Forever. I want to give the fans the wrestling games that they want. I want to give the wrestling fans the game that they deserve. History of AEW Fight Forever. Kicking around the idea for a game even before AEW's flagship show Dynamite even launched back in 2019. Officially announced November 2020, partnering with developer Yux. Attitude Era wrestling fans would know not just the New Japan games in the late 90s, but the freaking WWF Smackdown series. Now, Steve, you've been uh, playing through the wrestling games of old. On All Twitch. of them, nearly, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm very, very fond of Ukes and very familiar with their games. So uh, I've been psyched for this for a long time. Steve, how was SmackDown? SmackDown was revolutionary. It was amazing at the time. It's a bit threadbare going back. Like, they definitely built on it uh, over time. Like, SmackDown 2, much, much better than the first one. Just bring it. Eh. Not so great, but then we had two of my all-time favorite wrestling games. Shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. <laughs> and here comes the pain. Legendary wrestling games. I've played both of them within the last year or so, and they've aged remarkably well and are still every bit as good as they ever were. Which is the SmackDown where you can fight on the streets of New York City in front of WWE New York and commandeer a helicopter and shoot at your opponents? to be a DQ. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I was looking. Uh, Yoshi Tatsu visited Yuke's offices in Japan and he went to their boardroom and it, it is inside a legit like steel cage. That's so awesome. <laughs> it's so cool. And uh, they're like, here are our beds from when we work too late and have to sleep. And I was like, oh my God, that's so sad. They're really happy to show you <laughs> their, their beds that are beside their computer. Anyway, year after year, iteration after iteration, the partnerships with WWE and Ukes lasting long enough that the series morphed into WWE 12, 13, 14. You know, we got that horrendous like yearly cycle. Ukes noping out after 2K19, citing frustration at being shackled to that annual release. But they can look back on their time with WWF with pride. And also this quote from Rumble Roses. Cowgirl has teats more magnificent than my sheep. Cowgirl has teats more magnificent than my sheep. AEW Fight Forever is led by WWF No Mercy and Def Jam Vendetta director Geta Iwashita. Oh, um, WWF No Mercy? Amazing. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. Just legendary. It's like a perfect wrestling game. I would love to say it's perfect, but if you're playing on real hardware, it does have an issue where it'll just wipe out all your save data for no reason. I did hear about this. Yeah, yeah. And it's devastated the minds of people that have played and had this <laughs> and had this happen to them. Never happened to me as a kid. But it later on, I, I just it's a bug. And I think in later revisions of the cart, it doesn't do it. You can look it up about like what cart you have, but that's like the only thing I can say like against it. That's it. It's flawless otherwise. Yeah, which perfectly fits as AEW is heavily influenced by WWF No Mercy and the N64 Aki wrestling games like WCW versus WCW versus NWO Revenge. Yes, mm -hmm. which is my personal favorite of the N64 games. I just loved it. Is Glacier in it? Glacier is in it. <laughs> yes. yes. Glacier right. confirmed. Yes. 10 on 10, you know? Like, how, how could you have him in a game and it not be your favourite? <laughs> so, right from the get-go, this AW game, it's not supposed to be a WWE 2K game with a different roster. AW 
April 2022, Tony Khan announces the game will be called AEW Fight Forever. In June, they confirm Cody will still be in the game despite going to WWE and being in two rival wrestling games the same calendar year, the first person in history to do it. It's amazing. Cody Rhodes, man. What an absolute gangster. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so he's in AW5 Forever and WWE 2K 2023. We always want to make something that's fun and refreshing like our TV wrestling show. And to this, to us, this means we are on the right path. Thank you. August was a very big month. Eva Luno and Colt Cabana were at Gamescom in Germany, which we spliced into our All Out review, showing off gameplay footage of Kenny Omega and Adam Cole. Do you remember that one? I do, yes, yes. Uh, I remember capturing it, and I remember watching it, <laughs> and I remember thinking, this game looks like so much fun, and surely it's going to be out any time now if they're showing it at a live show. A year ago. (laughs) I do want to cut in with the name, and this credit goes completely to Matthew. Uh, He dubbed this AEW Develop It Forever. (laughs) At some point, I think everyone was getting really, really frustrated with how long it was taking. But when Jay just mentioned like it was being shown at live events, it's like, okay, we have to be there at some point, but no delay after delay after delay. And I was starting to get a bit worried. Oh, I'm going to have to do a what happened on this game. Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) But juicy or scandal wise, the cover art was revealed featuring CM Punk in front. (laughs) Pre brawl out CM Punk. Yeah, yeah. So it was, which was scrapped in November after Punk left in a blaze of sour grapes after all out. But thankfully they kept him in the game. So, you know, yeah, there we go. Every cloud. September 2022 fans got their hands on the first playable demo. And then in May 2023, Chivos were listed and you could preload the game via the Xbox app. It's like, okay, we are barreling down the finish line. No going back. Kenny announcing the game would release internationally June 29th, 2023. And that brings us to today. AEW, fight forever. Did I say, like, we got a code? Did I say that? Yes. I did. Okay. The big G hooked us up. (laughs) The big G! (laughs) The roster. First things first, where is Punk? Let me see his stats. I want to compare his superstar ranking versus Kenny Omega at the box. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have it. No. They don't do it. I was devastated. There's 60 wrestlers overall, of which eight are paywalled. We'll get onto that in a minute. 39 men available at launch. So all the big names are here that you'd expect. MJF, Omega in the books, Cody and Dustin, Punk and Hangman, Brian Danielson, Christian, Darby and Sting, Mox, Jericho, Penta says, Ray Fenix. Only a handful of women, 13. Jay, Rio, Ruby, Tay-Tay, Aubrey Edwards doing double duty as ref yeah. and an active wrestler. <laughs> so that's 52. And the remaining eight extra characters not in the base version, pre-order Matt Hardy by two. You get uh, broken and mended Matt Hardy. It's a really odd choice. He was kind of hot a couple of years ago. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's weird that you've got to pay for Matt Hardy, but Jeff Hardy is in the base game. Like you can I have know him for free. Matt Hardy. Like I'm literally yeah. named yeah. after Matt Hardy. Yeah. He's one of my favorite wrestlers. But if you're <laughs> gonna paywall a Hardy brother, yeah. paywall Jeff for mm. fuck's sake. Like, mm, he has big money, he Matt Hardy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. DLC, you got FTR, Dax and Cash. Keith Lee and the Bunny, and Hook and Danhausen. Love that, Danhausen. All in this lovely graphic by the SmackdownHotel.com. Great resource. You should check it out. Of note, Owen Hart in Fight Forever. It's crazy. Like, how did this... What association has the... Owen Hart had with AEW? Did you guys have the the background on this? Like, why did this come about? Yeah, yeah, they formed... It's a, really nice. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. They formed a partnership with the Owen Hart Foundation. Yeah, Martha Hart has been on AEW a couple of times. Uh, and in 2022, they did the Owen Hart Cup, which is won by Adam Cole and Britt Baker. Very good. And they're bringing it back this year. Uh, we actually just just had some first round matches at Forbidden Door. Uh, yeah, I won't give any spoilers. Thank you. Owen Hart. Yeah, he hasn't been in any wrestling game since 2004, 
with Showdown Legends of Wrestling. Oh uh, my goodness. Wow. 19 years. I was like, he looks a lot like Bruce. You know, can we? He does a bit in it. Yeah. Can we get some glasses on him and a scowl? <laughs> can we have a uh, wet shirt skin, <laughs> uh, Owen, please, with the gaudy boots as well, you know? Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Day One DLC? They're the revival there. In general, I don't like Day One DLC. I think it's a bit cheeky. I'm very much a fan of bring out your game, feature pack your game full of content, and let's talk about DLC a few weeks to a few months later. I mean, it's AW and I'm an admitted AEW mark, and so, you know, I will buy it because I do want to give them money. So from that point of view, they'll get a pass, but I will understand if anybody else is really pissed off. Um, Chris- Where's Daddy Magic? Yeah. <laughs> Um, that's come. That's actually my next point. People kind of on TV that you'd expect to see of who's not there. Okay, my boys, the acclaimed ah. Billy Gunn, Tony Storm, Paige Ha, Jay White, Ethan Page, Eva Luno, who did all the promo work. I the, the fact God that game. Eva Luno Son is not a- in this is really mean. Oh, Matthew's made. Get him in there. <laughs> Was it the who was it that did like mocap for one of the early SmackDown games and didn't get in? Was was it like the Hardys or something in like a nineteen ninety uh, game? Or? I think for like WWF Warzone or Attitude, like the really shitty ones that weren't the Aki Engine stuff, like the ones made by Acclaim. Acclaim I believe, it, yeah. I believe it was the Hardy Boys. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's so mean. Of course, uh, representing Dark Order, you have John Silver there. No boy stable superstar, Serpentico. No Chris Daniels or Kaz, Brandon Cutler, Michael Nakazawa, Jamie Hayter, Swerve Strickland, Juice Robinson. Uh, obviously, no Ring of Honor wrestlers. So, no Claudio, Joe, Shibata, Athena. But hopefully, can we get an ROH pack down the line? ROH DLC pack would be really mm. nice. Just mm. don't overcharge it. Maybe 15 bucks. Give us like eight wrestlers, like a new ring, new arena, entrances, couple of new moves. And I'd gladly pay for that. Yeah. Well, you can see the kind of roster there. So if there's anyone else that you are sad that are not there, just leave his comment below. So let me know who your boy is. That's a quickie <laughs> boy stable plug. Graphics! Boot up, choose your fighter. And I was just going through the roster and I was just, just looking <clears throat> at all the renders they have. And I was like, uh, uh, oh my God. <laughs> What's happening? Sting? What is going on? Oh, Therapy Eye Sting. If I hadn't have been for cross-site Joe, I'd be married <laughs> a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, from? from cross-site Sting? <laughs> oh my god. Man, I like, oh my god, CM Punk chewing on a wasp here. <laughs> Everybody's missing a few chromosomes. Like, <laughs> you look. Uh, the books look terrible. Nick Jackson looked like he just shit his pants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just stoon in it. <laughs> but you are right in that there's not all of them, but there are several faces that look quite good. Uh, MJF looks amazing. Jeff Hardy uh, looks amazing. But then, yeah, Sting. Um, Sammy looks really bad. Yeah. Eddie also looks weird. Yeah. Yeah. And oddest of all, Kenny Omega doesn't really look like him that much. There's something going on with his eyebrows or you'd think he would be the most accurate of all. But when I look at him, I'm like, that that seems like it needs a little bit more work. Um, that type of thing. And, and you think Kenny would, would have just made sure all the programmers like spent all their time on his character model. But he looks a little off to me. I actually think that my personal favorite out of them all, like the one that made me actually laugh out loud, is they did Chris Jericho dirty in this game, lads. It's Fat Jericho. Oh, yeah. it was like Christmas boozer, Jericho. <laughs> this he, is like... He's a brick. 2021 right? Jericho when he definitely put on a few pounds and uh, he's since dropped it all and he's yeah, in great, yeah, he's shape, great shape, shape now. That's so mean. But they really did him dirty. You know WWE All-Stars or Legends of WrestleMania where everyone has like an action figure body? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's the opposite here for Jericho. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, just to go the opposite route, 
Malachi Black, I think he looks amazing in yeah. it. Mm. And anyone that has like a onesie on, like um, Dustin Runnels. Dustin like, looks great. He looks amazing. Yeah. Big Show, I thought he looks yeah. great as well. Darby looks really good. He does. Um, I think for me, in terms of the face, the one that looks the best to me is probably Jeff Hardy. They mm. nailed Jeff in this game. He looks absolutely phenomenal, which is why you should have charged for him. Yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, the graphics, they're this weird halfway point between cartoony and photorealistic. Like, I think they should have gone all out cartoony. Like, as you were mm-hmm. saying, like with WWE All-Stars, where it's just crazy cartoony version yeah. of them. So it's highly stylized. Or you could have gone the opposite route, which would be like cell shaded like tears of the kingdom that kind of thing yeah and i think it wouldn't be resource heavy like i i I, okay i actually like how it looks i i no way yeah yeah i do on a gamecube (laughs) i actually think that it has like charm and i think that this game in 10 15 years in the future will keep its charm and it'll always look just like this whereas you know like a 2k 23 as consoles get more powerful and they can push more polygons and better lighting and all that stuff, 2K23 in 10, 15 years is going to look like shit because 2K33 is going to look unbelievably great. But this will always look cool. Fine. Yeah, I'm with Steve on this. Okay. See, we're taking so long on this because it's the first thing people will see. Mm -hmm. And if you were going to buy it, your first impression will be this. Jay, you have to remember this is built off the look and feel of the N64 games where the face textures were just a mashed up pizza. (laughs) And like, you know, Triple H was just, you know, splattered pepperonis and a giant nose. (laughs) Like that's all that's all it was. And I think Kenny Omega wanted to bring that era back. Yeah. Flat textures on some kind of, you know, Lego head. Yes. <laughs> and that's what you'll have and you'll fucking like it. They should have done that. <laughs> I'd love to play that game. Okay. Got the big one here. Gameplay. Steve, how does this gameplay? Very well. I really like it. It's definitely kept the bones of those N64 games, which is what they were going for. But the wrestlers now don't slowly waddle around like they've dropped a load in their jocks. <laughs> and <laughs> and they're very zippy. And they move around the ring really quickly. You can get in and out of the ring super quick. You can climb the ropes. So yeah, like it's definitely got those genes, but in a more modern gameplay and setting i yeah i really really like it i could see myself playing this game more than 2k 23 which is quite cumbersome and slow and very very glitchy but this is fast and it's just more fun and i do like it i would love to sit down in a room with friends with multiple pads and just play all night and i reckon you'd have an absolute blast Hmm. Uh, what do you think matt much the same. Like Steve said, it's, it plays really similarly to the N64 games, but just with some smart quality of life improvements, everyone's a lot snappier, a lot speedier. And unlike modern WWE games, if you get to the top of a ladder, you don't have to take out a fucking abacus to help you with the <laughs> mini game that yeah, you yeah. need to do to grab the briefcase or the belt. There is a mini game in this when you have to grab whatever's at the top of the ladder, but it's actually pretty fun. It's like mash this button. Okay, now mash this button and you just go around the face buttons and it's like simple to remember. And I, I, I forget where that where, where you have to play Mousetrap to get like a belt in WWE 2K, whatever. You have to play the board game Mousetrap to get to unhook <laughs> whatever it was. It was insane. And they had all that stuff for like submissions and all these things that they think makes it more interesting but it doesn't like steve said it makes it more cumbersome it makes it not easy to play if you're to ask ooc to play this he could probably do it if you're gonna ask him to play wa 2k 23 i don't know make you know i'm not to speak for the man but um i can't even play that it's just so overthunk the mechanics of that and this is just so much more simpler to pick up and play if i want to grab a weapon i can do that I don't need to do a scientist project every time to figure out the button combination to do it. And is that because I'm older now? Yes, that's true. But it also makes the game more fun. So that's what really counts. 
Yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, yeah, I agree. Like, you said it, Zippy. And that, that was on Bungle as well. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's great. Uh, very arcadey. Plays exactly like you'd hope a wrestling game would play. Like I played on PS5. Like, okay, squares, punch, triangle, kick, X to grapple, circle to run, D-pad modifiers, you know, and choosing the grapple and finishers. And some more are context sensitive. Like if the opponent is face down or face up, on the mat or standing. Like if you want to hit Daniel Bryan. Brian Danielson's uh, the psycho knee. You have to be running to do it, that kind of thing. I found it very intuitive, pick up and play. Like you can just start the game and you'll start playing it and you can yeah. be competitive at it. And then you can kind of learn as you go along as opposed to having to do homework to use it. So man, winner. Great job, lads. Yeah, really good. I do want to say though, in the road to elite mode, one of the matches in it, you have a triple threat ladder match and I played through it twice and the exact same issue happened twice. The AI when there's two people down below and you're going up to get the belt, just shits itself and they fight each other or they just watch you. And so both times that I did that match, I became the champion within 90 seconds. I was like, you you definitely need to patch this AI, lads, because, you know, uh, ladder matches need to be probably the most fun out of all the match types. And if I can just grab a ladder, climb up and, and become champion in 60 seconds, like, I don't want to play that match type anymore, you know? Wow. Well, that leads us into the next category, match types. Match types! We've got singles, tag, three-way, fatal four-way, casino battle royale, farty pyro, ladder, <laughs> mini games, and training. And Farty th- pyro. <laughs> there are more in story <laughs> mode, mostly kind of two-on-one, three-on-one, that kind of thing. Most of these you'd already know from WWE games, like a ladder match is a ladder match, as Matt was saying. But if you didn't know, casino battle royale is a 21-man over-the-top Royal Rumble Entry determined by what card they drew. My favourite, though, the exploding barbed wire deathmatch. It's so much fun. As you get two minutes before explosions begin and the ropes are covered in barbed wire, so you can juice that way, brother. It's a bloodbath. It's fucking phenomenal. I loved it. And it's frantic and it's fun. It's like super arcadey. I didn't expect it to be this much fun. Yeah. And it was like, devs. Any chance you could include, like, just a random percent chance that when the explosion goes off, nothing happens? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay, that's very funny. Mm. And part of me wants it. Yeah. Oh, you should be able to take your body and protect your opponent <laughs> from the explosions. <laughs> just lay on top of them. That'd be sick, too. Uh. <laughs> Eddie Kingston just runs out in every single match, you know? <laughs> yeah. Match types, I do want to bring up, I think it's a cardinal sin to have a wrestling game and not have a cage match. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, It's one of your basic staples of wrestling games, and I think it's sorely missed. Sort that out. Yeah, no blood and guts. Yeah. Blood and guts is a different issue, you know, because you need the extra ring there. Yeah, Uh, Like 2K23 has war games in it for the first time ever in a wrestling game, and I'm sure the amount of work to add that extra ring into it and change everything like took a long time so i understand that not being in this game maybe that's something that you'd bring into the sequel but uh yeah cage match come on lads they need the world war three three rings oh Get that in there. a three ring listen everyone in the roster is in this match <laughs> hogan just giving out because i deserve a shot at my belt even though you say that, it still impressed me the amount of modes and match types for this being their first game. Like, yes, you yeah. usually expect it to have way less. As much as I love WWE All-Stars, one thing about that game is that there's so few match types. But it was the first game of that type made by a new developer, so that's why I always lament that there was never a sequel, because then they could have just turned the dial up. But I was happy with what's here, but yeah, cage match was really missing. There's no trios matches, are there? There's no no trios. I I just want to point out that I recently went back and I played TNA Impact, (laughs) which was also a first game from a young company that came out. 
and that game is threadbare like the amount of match types in that game is really small like there's no cage match no false count anywhere match <laughs> There's no clipboard match. <laughs> <laughs> there is no. There is the ultimate X match, uh, yeah. which sounds great on paper, but it's not much fun to actually play because it's literally just I'm gonna climb up and fall, then you climb up and fall, then I climb up and fall. You know. <laughs> mm. Obviously, I can be pissed that they don't have this match type or that match type, but you do have to bear in mind it. Like AEW is a four-year-old company. This is their first game, and for a base template, it's really good. You know, and there's plenty in it, even though I would like slightly more. Mm. Oh, this is going to be good. Just when you think you've seen it all, he turns it around and gets the win out of the win. We got the big one up next story mode called Road to Elite, where you play 16 weeks in the life of an AEW wrestler. Okay, so each week you'll faff about doing three things before ending the week with a match on Dynamite. Do that again for week two and week three. Week four is the pay-per-view, and you do that entire loop four times. Uh, So I'll just give you my musings as I play through, and please chime in with yours. Mm -hmm. Diet! You get to choose the difficulty of the game, but more importantly, what diet they eat. So obviously I choose Daniel Bryan, meat eater. (laughs) (laughs) It's so good because, like, he's going, mm, I love Philly cheesesteak. Mm, the beef strips just feel so good in my mouth. <laughs> Daisy the cow somewhere just turning over in her grave. <laughs> I was really hoping if you went to Chicago, you'd get to go to Mindy's Bakery and try oh, out the muffins. Oh, shit. That'd be so amazing. I don't think it's in there, though. Oh, fantastic. The entrances are like the TNA video game. 20-second snippets at just the ramp. Justin Roberts does the voice over, but you don't see him like rendered in the ring. Yeah. Just the voice. Uh, he does a freaking great job doing a voiceover. He sounds just like he does on TV. Yeah. Same as Excalibur as yep. well. So, well done, mate. Uh, J.R. <sighs> he yeah, is still... He's sounding a bit rough, isn't he? Fucking mm. horrendous, mate. <laughs> This is episode number one, the start of a revolution in pro wrestling. You better believe that every person on the stacked roster is jockeying for a top position. Just like he was in the late 90s, so it he... (laughs) We're here on Wednesday night, Uh, you know what that means, Uh, it's impact, Uh, let's have the match. I'm like, Jim, Jim, just close your eyes and imagine you're actually calling an actual show. Put some feeling in it, please, mate. But JR's delivery made for milestone moments in certain video games. Like, Chris Benoit shoots the twisty rockets at (laughs) Stacey (laughs) Keebler. Holy shit. Chris Jericho has the twisty rockets. Hello, this is Tony Khan. Hope you're well. I'm reaching out on behalf of All Elite Wrestling. We want to make you an offer. Talk to you soon. All right, the show kicks off with getting a phone call from Tony Khan. Who actually read his lines fairly well. Yeah, well He He did better on audio than he does in front of the camera. He doesn't have that deer in the headlights face, you know? He's got the Jack Tunney <laughs> reading off the Yes, script. yes. I have to say, like, it does take a while to get used to the dodgy graphics. Like, looking at the phone, it's like, holy shit. It should have been, like, a flip phone from, like, 2006. <laughs> I mean, the writing, it varies, but in general, I thought it was shite. Like, generic stuff any wrestler, male or female, could say. There's a bit where Daniel Bryan is like, well, that happened. And I was like, oh my God. Um, How are you, Chandler? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, but there's there's some bits that I was surprised that were as funny as they were. Like, I think you're you're having dinner and then Phoenix comes up to you and he and he's just like, uh, you and your current tag partner don't make for a good team. And your character's like, uh, okay, well, we've only had one match, so maybe don't compare us with you and your literal brother. And he's <laughs> like, oh, okay. And like wanders oh. off or the servers at, at restaurants just say, here you go, wrestler person, whoever you are, you seem like a big <laughs> deal. So there's little bits that made me feel like someone went back into the script and said, let me punch this up 
with like little references, little cheeky nods to things here and there. Yes. It's certainly not the greatest writing ever. Like, like Jay said, your wrestler, because they have to write for anything Anybody. like it, it has to be somewhat generic, but this is still at least better than the story mode from what uh 2k 22, the one where your character is like you, you and your sister, uh, Steve, oh, remember that's, 20. This? that's 20. Oh yeah. God. That thing was like, the worst I've ever seen in anything. But Matt, what about Samoa Joe with the robot arm? <laughs> it was amazing. What about it? It was like top tier bollocks. Uh, uh, but go ahead. <laughs> in the kayfabe of 2K20, Samoa Joe loses his arm uh, <laughs> and it's our character's fault, but he comes back with a cyborg robot arm and he hits him with a clothesline and injures us and we have to fight back against Robo Joe <laughs> and overcome it. You like, hear that, Robo it's Joe? It's just top tier I'm going to beat you, Robo Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's shaking his robot arm at you. Yeah. <laughs> there is a couple of fun lines like Daniel Bryan be like, you're sticking me in a battle royale? Want me to sell popcorn too? <laughs> and uh, if you're playing his own heart, he'll, he'll say... A battle royal? Is this one of those old man gimmick battle royals? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sheikah's gonna win because he can't bump. There we go. And uh, the books call themselves Extremely Violent People. Yes. Uh, EVP, so I did enjoy that. We had a goal. The goal was to put 10,000 people in a building, and by God, we did it. There's a few video packages throughout, like the Double or Nothing announcement party or famous moments in AEW history. Ooh, got a bit of behind the scenes for you. In terms of pre-release guidance from the marketing department where we got the codes, they give you like a PDF about it. And it was mostly, here's the review embargo date and time, but just they were emphasizing be careful posting AW TV and pay-per-view footage and don't use certain theme songs because you'll get copyright snags. Daniel Bryan's theme, Jungle Boy's theme, Punk's cult of personality, you know, like licensed music. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. But in terms of like... It's actually you, helpful. In terms of like you can't say this or there's nothing like that. Okay, good, that's fair. So they're not trying to force people into shilling their game. Like they, they're giving it to people because I would imagine they're confident that most people are going to like the game and say positive things about it. So that's a plus. You can only use our PC footage of Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> <laughs> our vertical slice <laughs> that actually works. Okay, let's move on. You debut at Double or Nothing's Casino Battle Royale, where you're having to eliminate multiple people. Man, I was like, I thought this was a huge mistake because your your first match and it's like a twenty something minute slog yep. trying to get through a dozen or so wrestlers. I agree. Oh my god, save that for when you know the controls. I genuinely thought that it was going to last a bit longer and you were going to debut on dark and you were going to have to work your way up through the roster. Or then you'd maybe go to Rampage and then Dynamite and start getting pay per views. But they literally throw you in at the deep end. I played through this mode twice. I couldn't win that first match. Like I got close, but just. By the time you're getting to the last few people, like you're just knackered and they punch you once and you're on the ground for 90 seconds, you know? Mm. Um, so yeah, it's really, really difficult. Like you're right, but at the same time, this is, I think they decided to model this directly after the story mode from No Mercy where you can lose or win matches and the game continues regardless. Yeah. But maybe one match before the Casino Battle Royale, that would have been nice. But I didn't get a second playthrough yet, so I don't know how much it changes. But Steve, you said you did? Yeah, I played my first playthrough. I, I made uh, Homeless V1. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then... Uh, Was he wearing Irish attire? He, I did have an Irish cap on. Okay. And when he's backstage, he has an Irish scarf. But then when he's in the ring, he just wears the sweatpants and the brown shirt, you know? Excellent. Great, you know, classy act. Um, <laughs> and then for my second playthrough, I wanted to play as an actual roster wrestler to see if there was a difference. So I picked MJF because he's my favorite. And uh, uh, no, it's basically the same thing. But I did lose certain matches on purpose to see if it would branch. And it absolutely did. And nice. 
I'd say about half of my second playthrough was completely different with different wrestlers, different angles, different matches. And so I would love to have an actual flow chart to see what does what so that I can play through it multiple times and see everything. Nerds Mm. will make that for you, don't worry. Of course they will. (laughs) Um, I think in No Mercy, when you did the career mode, there was the actual flowchart in-game, and you could see... There was, yeah. I kind of wish that you could see where Mm. to win and lose, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Just on the difficulty of the first match, I th- it's a great time to mention there is a training mode. It's really, really handy where you can just wail on an opponent and try out all of your moves and combinations instead of having to do a trial by fire. So they do have that option. It's pretty good. One, two, three. My first feud was with Malachi Black. And after the match, there was a cutscene where we're driving together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cafe, it's done. We're out. It's 1987. <laughs> Sheik and Duggan all over again. <laughs> uh, they found the old Mary Jane and cocaine in the car. And they, oh man, I killed Duggan's career after that. And then they took the belt off Rob Van Dam. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mid carter for life, for life, <laughs> for, 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 for life. <laughs> but in general, apart from like specific sequences, there's no voice acting. So Matt, if you wouldn't mind, you're good in the ring, but maybe your politicking needs work. Eh? I like it's, it. It's like oh, did the books write that? Definitely, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> definitely. Let me teach you about character stats. Ooh, activities! Each week you do three activities and then a wrestling match. So let's go through those. You can train, or if you're injured, you have to go to the hospital and heal yourself. So, aka, lose a turn. Me, um, me, 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 me. Um, but I did like the nurse walking in, posing like she's Brian Cage. <laughs> <laughs> The portrait picture of Brian Cage looks like someone has a an industrial vacuum that's shooting into his face air and his <laughs> mouth is billowing with all the air pressure. He's eating an invisible hoagie. Yeah. <laughs> Dining, where vegan Brian Danielson can eat some alligator. Mm. <laughs> or my favorite, go out. You can go sightseeing, press conference or mini game. Sightseeing is a quickie cutscene, usually with another wrestler, and at the end you get to take a selfie. I love this idea. Yeah, it's good. Mm-hmm. It's but good. the execution is eh, like the writing is eh, and the characters eh, and the background is usually a still photo. It's amazing. <laughs> I see that I see a JPEG of a place that I've actually been, like, oh, they were at Venice Beach. And I'm like, that's just a pixelized JPEG that they got off Google Maps. Like, I actually kind of find that charming. Look at this, it's the, the green screen like AVGN in front, <laughs> in front of a boat in a lake. <laughs> oh my god. I was just going to say, the thing that I like about how the day is set up is that you can miss stuff. Like, if you just go for two meals, like one before your workout, one after, you'll potentially miss a wrestler being at a certain spot. When yep, I was yep, doing, yep. I got a, like a photo op with... um I forget who now, but someone just kind of showed up that wasn't there before. And I was like, oh, they were here. And it's to get those snapshots with the wrestlers. And I'm like, this is just a really neat thing. I haven't seen any other single player story mode kind of build the way that this one quite does. And it's like refreshing. It's more about a wrestler's life on the road and experiencing the country rather than it just be about the wrestling organization like WWE it's always us 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 and this is more about like what you have to actually do on a day-to-day basis as a wrestler it's really cool yeah I would say that it's a much more fun way of passing time than what they do in 2k22 and 23 where the single player my rise mode is 90% social media based And I hated it so lazy. Get enough of that in real life. Yeah, 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 fuck off, you know? (laughs) Okay, like, I want my single-player portion of the game, I want to be living the life of a wrestler. I want to travel to towns, I want to go to the show, I want to come out to the ring, I want to have promos, and I want to have choices where things branch off. We didn't quite get this here, but I think that they did a better job of making me 
kind of feel. I want to say like, oh, I really feel like a wrestler. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I think that they did a better job of getting the life across than they do with the social media based shite in two K twenty three. Okay, uh, when you're in Washington, did you go see the Backlands Monument? I wish I, I did. did. There we go. I got one with Puck. Hello. Do you like him? Do you yeah, like what's great. happening here? He looks like Gollum. I keep Bastard telling you, Mister Gollum. <laughs> Pot looks more like an orc. He's wildly, yeah, yeah, wildly okay. gratinous. It's hilarious because I got this cutscene when I was Penta, and just the idea of Penta visiting the fucking memorial, and he's just wearing a t-shirt, and Pox just there, and they're acting like they don't know each other when they're in a team <laughs> with each other. It's just amazing. Like, okay, that's really funny. It, it's these mistakes and little flubs. It's like, you know, what makes movies like Samurai Copper or whatever, like, fun and memorable. When something's super duper polished to the point where it's like, WWE has complete control over all the entrances and they have to be this accurate it's like sometimes little mistakes that don't take away from the gameplay actually make things like this uh, a bit more fun yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, definitely do i look like a red rooster to you someone better make me an omelet when i win i was like i flipped my shit it was a red rooster oh my god i love (laughs) this what's going on because i didn't get to see any of this Oh, wow, well, okay. Yeah, that that's hilarious, yeah, Red Rooster. Daniel Bryan's my favourite wrestler in modern times. He's a you know, modern Bret Hart, so of course I had to go. And I was like, if I play as him, you think of all the different moves you can do, yeah. you know? Amazing. <laughs> Mini games, all in, there are 19. Wow. Which is pretty awesome. During story mode, it was different each time, so that, very cool. But quality ranges wildly. <laughs> I want to say like I played maybe about a dozen or so. And there's some that I really liked. There's some that are hilariously low budget. Like, here's a picture. Find Orange Cassidy. <laughs> and he's right there in the center <laughs> of two people in the picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like then there's like really fun ones like Penta says which is you know yeah, like yeah, a the, time-based button yeah, press yeah, yeah. you know like a dancing the game DDR, yeah. the baseball one which the is pr- probably my favorite yeah, yeah, out yeah. of them all you yeah. know uh, and then there's one you know where you pick up like tokens and coins and there's one where you have to pose in the light and you get it like a point for every second but people can like punch you out of it so yeah I thought going into this game that they were going to be a shitty gimmick that I'd play once and never play again but I was surprised at how much I found myself liking them and I reckon if you had the chance to sit in a room with friends and play them you'd probably have a blast mm. Yeah, I, th- I think the Bucks are huge Mario Party fans, so that's why they insisted that there be mini games. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, w- I was getting a big Mario Party vibe. I was just hoping, I wish the graphics were more cartoony to, and it would vibe way better with the mini games. Yeah. Because it it's I like having real wrestlers and a crazy mini game looks weird to me. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I go, yeah. But yeah, this is like tremendously creative like an awesome idea. And like, I'd hope when they do a sequel to do more of this. Definitely. You know? Road to Elite Finale. AEW Dark becomes available as an optional extra during the week. Rampage 2. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, bang, we're already out of date because there's no collision. Mm. Yeah, you know? okay. Ah. Yeah. I got challenged by Punk for his Rampage debut. Do you get that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I know it's a game because I hit my signature and then his finisher and then pin them clean. <laughs> 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 Crazy stuff like Dustin giving up on a leg grapevine. Shocking, shocking. Just in terms of moves, like everyone has their universal moves like strike, kick, hip toss. But in general, the wrestlers could all use more varied grapple moves. Like when I was playing as Jungle Boy, all of his grapples are just, you know, the big whoopsie onto the back. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) okay. It's like, come on, but maybe that's true to life. 
<laughs> you know what I did like about the wrestlers? Each wrestler can have up to five finishers and five signature moves that can take place at different parts of the ring. One can be like a front grapple. One can be a grapple from behind. You can do one from the top ropes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can have one in the ropes. You can have one there. You can have one when you're running. Like So I really did feel like that there's a wealth of wrestling moves that you can do. If you've two people playing this game who have mastered it, I, I reckon some of the matches could look amazing. Mm. And they'd be wildly different, their storyline as well. Yeah. You know? I did get asked to pair up, and you can choose who you want. I chose Ruby Riot, and we went to dinner. It's like, she looks like a cheap date. <laughs> <laughs> and then Brian starts giving her shit. It's like, yeah, I want you to steal bread rolls, put them in your bag. <laughs> Um, that's th- that's yeah, fucking funny, man. It's pretty good. Um, sometimes the game crops out the plate the waitress sends you. She just comes over and her hands are underneath. And like, here you go. And th- the picture of it pops up on screen. It's like, oh, I, I know what and you're then, doing. And then your character's like, time to dig in to whatever's on my plate. I can't see it. Avocado toast. Mm. It, it just when playing through it, I felt like, which is generally the case in wrestling games, is that you're more of a passenger along the ride, where there is, sometimes there's options, but it's not really an option, because Death Triangle were like, hey, Brian Danielson, do you want to join Death Triangle? And I'm like, absolutely I do. Yeah, I actually had this one as well. And yeah. and then they just say, you're making fun of us, no, no, let's feud. And I was like, what? So you can't join Death Triangle then? Can you? And just- then the game throws you into probably the most difficult match in the entire mode, where you mm. have to take on the three members of Death Triangle at the same time? Fuck off, that was so difficult. They were never going to let you in, because then they'd have to rename the group Death Square. <laughs> <laughs> Death Quadrangle. Ooh. <laughs> Gotta find, like, Billy Gunn and make Death Rhombus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, brilliant. brilliant. Oh, it was like, that's a bit like, do you remember Telltale's Walking Dead? Where if someone's, are you going to kill this woman? And like, if you don't, in like two episodes time, she just hightails it. Yeah. And so mm. she leaves the story anyway. So it's a bit like that. Oh man, I was like fighting Matt Jackson. It's like Brock Lesnar steps in the ring. Because he's just... <laughs> <laughs> you could tell like, um, do you know when the dev is like coding the superstar stats? He's like, Matt would have his hand on the dev's hand. <laughs> <laughs> turning the knob to the top. <laughs> Oh, I do like, I did face Big <laughs> Show and I tried to power slam him and the game said, no. That's Good. awesome. Good. And if you do actually pick him up, then your character will sell their back as well, which is a nice touch. Brilliant. And you couldn't do the kind of bow and arrow and lift, but you can like put him into a face lock, which is probably more flexible than he is in real life. But <laughs> listen, we'll let <laughs> Okay, there's a gigantic mark out spoiler. So please skip ahead to the next chapter if you don't want to hear the end of Road to Elite. Okay, we'll just give you a couple of seconds because we recommend playing the game. De- yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spoiler! Okay, right before you challenge for the AEW world title. I never got the challenge for the world title in two playthroughs. Are you serious? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I won the tag belts. I won the FTW belt. I won the TNT belt, but I didn't even get the challenge for the world title. Oh my God. Cause all right. Uh, Matt, have you? No, I didn't uh, either. Oh my God. Shit. I don't want to tell you now. Cause I want you to get it full force in the face when it happens. And then I go on, go on, go on. Tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> so Brian Donison, when playing as he starts doubting himself. Maybe I can't do this. Maybe I'm not meant to win the world title. And a guy says, yeah, well, you're not. And you won't do it. You're not good enough. You haven't trained hard enough. And you look up and it is Dark Link from Ocarina of Time. It is you in dark spectral form. (laughs) What? (laughs) And then you have to face yourself in like the ethereal realm. That sounds amazing. Cleanse your mind and to focus on the world title. I was, oh my God. What fucking branch did you get to pull this off? Because I played through this twice. And so was that how yours ended? Oh no, you, well, you beat him. Then you go for the world title. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Cause that did not happen for me. Like both times I had a problem with the EVPs. (laughs) I battered Cody in a cutscene. Dustin came in for the save, so I had to fight Dustin. Then in the next match, I had to fight Cody in a lights out match. And then in the next match, I had to fight Kenny. And then for the final match of the entire road, I had to take on both books at the same time. Wow. That's what I got. 
Yeah, and then the first time I tried, I failed. And the second time when I did it with MJF, I beat them. And then it ends with MJF taking over a heat up. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, yeah, is, that, yeah. is, that is some uh, wrestling verite there. It was but, great crack. But for Jay's playthrough, it proves that the greatest battle is within. <laughs> <laughs> the battle <bear> would <laughs> Oh man! And then obviously, I just uh, my main event was a four way between. It's like, oh yeah, you're taking on Ricky Starks and Ruby Riot, and then it's like, all right, the next match it's Mox, Jericho, Kenny Omega, and you Holy in a four way. <laughs> Old fat Jericho, <laughs> beat the bollocks <laughs> out of me. Do you know when you you get hit and you knock down, then you're out for ninety seconds? Yeah, it, yeah. it was like that. It was a depressing. Fire. That's hilarious. <laughs> Well, well done, uh, Christmas boozer Jericho won it, so, you know, good, <laughs> good job. <laughs> Have you anything else on um, the road to elite, just in general? I, I was just going to say, like, um, no bugs for me at all. I think there was maybe a slight, like, clipping issue at some point, but I expect when you play through a big single-player mode, like, you know, the amount of stuff it throws at you, I would know. It seemed extremely polished. I guess all the time that this game took due to, like, uh, ESRB issues where they had to delay it. Obviously, Punk was a bit of concern what went down there, and they delayed it again. I guess this gave the devs, like, enough time to make sure, like, no one's eyeballs ripped off their skull, you know? <laughs> Becky Lynch's hair didn't go nuts and attack the crowd. <laughs> and, you know, none of the stuff that we've become used to seen in wrestling games the last, like, five years or, or such. So I was really pleased with that. Like, that was my major concern going into the single-player mode. Like, lots of weird stuff is going to happen. And no, nothing for me. Did you guys see anything in terms of, like, bugs or QA? I just had one thing, is that Death Triangle three-on-one match, Penta fell into the ring. Oh, wow. Oh. And, he was sequ- and I was like, oh, thank God, because there's two of you there. <laughs> now it's a two-on-one. <laughs> Still you job. Go for two. Yeah. For me, the only thing would have been the AI in the ladder match, which right. just kind of shat its pants, and I was able to win easily. But other than that, no. no, you're, no, you're, no. You're, uh, yeah, it's a good point, man. It actually ran really smoothly, and I had no major issues, yeah. Yeah, no, it was, it was quite well polished in that regard. Yeah, wow, yeah. Well done. Yeah, with Road to Elite... It was a lot of fun, and as soon as I was finished, I immediately want to do another round of it again, you know? Yeah, I've played it twice, and I'm definitely going to go back and play it again, and I'm going to pick a female to see if that changes things. I was Hmm. sad, because it's like, I don't have time to not have played it over again before we record. She's like, shit, shit. I think I'll probably make Roxy, uh, (gasps) because she can (laughs) lose. Roxy live yokes! And she's not going to give a shit, you know? (laughs) You can lose all your matches. Yeah, she she doesn't mind. (laughs) Harder the better. Oh. And sorry, Spike. Which makes me want to bring up, lads, did any of you try the Create a Wrestler suite? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think? Create a uh, Wrestler! In my opinion, it was the weakest part of the entire game. Mm-hmm. For me, the longevity of a pro wrestling game is based on two things. One would be the online suite, which I didn't check out because the game is not out yet. And second would be the creator wrestler. Because when you're finished with the single player content and you've done all the matches, what you're going to want to do is make the wrestlers that you want to so that you can have your own kind of dream cards and dream matches. And I thought that the creator wrestler mode was really lacking like TM a levels of kind of that's exactly what i was thinking when i was playing it yeah it, it's mostly flag based where yeah kind of apparel, you know? yeah there was only like 14 15 types of hair and i was like i, I was like i just want hair tied back in a ponytail with like shaved sides and i was like daniel bryan has it why isn't it there as an option you know so, yeah, I, th- I thought it was the weakest part of the game, personally. Yeah. See, I think most wrestling fans who buy a wrestling game, it, they actually want a sim. They actually want the creative wrestler and actually playing the wrestling game as secondary. Yeah. You want to make a car and then play the story mode as said car. You know, so... Uh, Suck my car. 
<laughs> There's also you can edit teams as well. Like, oh, I did make my characters called Jacinta Dinner. <laughs> um, I want to put her at the top. There's a picture over there. Just uh, you can edit team names and give them their own call by Justin Roberts. <gasps> of note, Golden Lovers is in there. Yes, that yeah. is marked out. And Kenny and Ibushi's hair beside each other as well. Just, yeah, just so you don't have to go far. There's also another Cans Angels. What? I was like, oh, which three like on the roster would be great for Tony Khan's Charlie's Angels? <laughs> Tay Mello, like, probably. Yeah. I tried to make Matt McMuscles and the names that you could choose from for Justin Roberts to say, I yeah. got him to say Matt McGillicuddy, which is not <gasps> what <I want>. <laughs> <laughs> This is the moment of Matt McMuscles. There was no McMuscles. <laughs> I would like to think Cody Rhodes would have made sure before he left AEW to like get McMuscles in there. I like his What Happened show. But yeah, like I I absolutely agree with both of you that I think this is the weakest part of the game. But having just played a bunch of Street Fighter 6, that game in its avatar creation mode lets you make Lovecraftian monsters if you want. Like, it's so in-depth and going to a wrestling game. Again, maybe they took their N64 inspiration a little too seriously this time because this is slightly above that you know Mm. slightly Mm. i will say the arenas had more than i was expecting given the kind of constraints because it's just the entrance ringside and ring but in that you can change kind of every aspect of that and you can put different cats and dogs and like cows on the the entrance ramp um so i made it like a footy type arena so there you go you can see it that's nice Uh, i was gonna say uh so i spent a good hour making my character you know and picking moves like there's hundreds of moves to go through oh my god it's insane yeah it's absolutely mental like from an in-ring point of view making your creator wrestler is exceptional because he can have whatever move is in your head and you're going to have a ball just making their looks is whatever. But when you're finished, it comes up. Homeless V1 is all elite and it's got the background and it's got the picture and I did mark out to that. Yeah. But uh, when you're in the menus, the jukebox is really bad. There's like five songs and I felt like I heard each of them 10 times. And I'm like, lads, just have the wrestler themes going in the background because they have 8-bit versions of the wrestler themes and they've like synth versions and orchestral versions. I'd really like that more rather than the one Max Caster rap over and over again. Mm-hmm. It's funny the first time. It's grating for the 10th time. Which one's that? Like, He's like, uh, oh, yeah, I'm in the game. I'm in the creator suite. I'm making my character. <laughs> yeah. like, it's fucking hilarious, but not for the 10th time. Yeah, yeah. Six figures in my savings. I didn't broke up with my main thing. Because I'm back up in career mode. Got me looking at the money like a weirdo. Oh, Matt, what do you think of the music? I mean, it's in this respect, it's a modern wrestling game. Here are all the licensed music and, and themes, and it just kind of comes at you. You know, having listened pretty religiously to wrestling bios over the years, I just want revenge music from WCW <laughs> and WWE <laughs> Revenge. I just want those tracks in the game. I don't know if I could, like, mob them in there, but, like, there's just... You know, not much to say for the music for me. Uh, also, um, uh, how do you guys feel about this? No, no, no play-by-play. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Much like the entrances being short at the beginning, it's quite disappointing mm-hmm. because you know when you fire up two K twenty three and you get to see like Cody's ten billion polygon entrance, it's absolutely <laughs> spectacular. But then when you play the game for five hours and you see it at every match, it's awful because it because it takes ages. Yeah. So I was happy for the shorter entrances after a few hours of playing and i think i felt the same with the fact that there's no play by play commentary at first it's quite jarring and grating it's like whoa it's so silent and weird but 
that also means that the longer I play, I don't have to hear the same awkward lines True. over and over and over again, and it will eventually become a negative. So I think for the long-term enjoyment of the game, I think it's a positive. Hmm. Yeah, uh, honestly, I, I didn't think about it. It was like, okay, yeah, it's kind of N64-ish, where we're mm. just going to focus on the gameplay, and I'm just focusing on doing my moves and having the match, so I, I didn't notice. Can you imagine how terrible it would have been if we had a heard phoned in J.R. Oh my god. Repeating the same lines ad nauseum. Oh my god. Jade Cargill shoots her twisty rockets. <laughs> <laughs> Edge has the twisty rockets. Chris Jericho just picked up the twisty rockets. Oh, amazing. Just some fun tidbits we have mentioned is that in the arena, you know, there's the ramps and then there's the big AW logo. You, if you can like suplex someone into it and break the screen. Yeah, it goes kind of like lines. Yeah. But then if you do it a second time, it breaks even further. It gets cracked. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And there's also a skateboard you can use. And actually, like, you kind of hover with it, it kind of breaks the game, but it looks amazing playing as it. I think you could get onto Undertaker's bike in Here Comes the Pain, and you could go around, and it was janky as fuck, but it was loads of fun, so it's definitely kind of harkening back to that as well. So just like in real life. Yeah. (laughs) If you play as Orange Cassidy, you can put your hands in your pocket and wrestle with your hands in your pockets. Amazing. Brilliant, what a great choice. And like MJF, instead of, I think, dodging some moves, he'll just go, no, no, please. He'll <laughs> just plead with you instead. So it's, oh, brilliant. At the very least, make sure you know how to do your finisher. Tips for first-time players. Play training first. Mm-hmm. Get the basics down and see what, you know, get used to the controls of it. Read what William Regal has to tell you. They're <laughs> solid. It's like if you want to focus on a different wrestler, press uh, L- L3 L3 yeah, yeah wait till your battery is low to eat like because like if you eat it's like plus 60 you know and it, it only it stops at 100 so when the match starts you should pause and look at your move list as well because it'll tell you the conditions that you can hit them in like if you go and your signatures as well like if you go to the top rope and your opponent's down down Brown can do his headbutt you know that kind of thing and um, if you have your special and then you just start taunting you'll get your kind of finisher meter up as well so Anyway, that's about it. No, just play the game. You'll get better at it as you play it. So just just play the game, which is awesome. The game gets better as you play it. Yeah, I know this is such a tired line, but it's like, it's easy to pick up, but it's going to be hard to master. There's going to be people out there who are just incredible at this game and put on Dave Meltzer five <laughs> star classics, classics and, it, and they're going to be amazing to watch. But if you don't want to take the time to like learn the ins and outs and the depth you can easily just go in and mash buttons and you'll have loads of crack just have fun the game is loads of fun i think it's the most fun out of the box wrestling game that's come out in a long time yeah uh, what do you think matt yeah so just like steve said this has been said a lot but yeah it's easy to play but hard to master For a tip for myself, kind of what Jay was going for about the training mode is that defense is also kind of key. If anyone that has been playing a WWE game for the last like 10 years, it's like they don't have those little pop-ups that say like plus R1 now. There's not that in here, but the window to press them I find is generous. So you have to get used to just looking at the animations. Oh, a punch is coming. I just have to press the shoulder button. It's simple to do and you it does take some time to adjust, but it's how the, the old games were played to the best of their ability is to have a really, really strong defense. And then you constantly counter things. You constantly do reversals and it just looks cool. But overall, like if Kenny's goal was to make me like the game more due to nostalgia versus not like having so much based on the N64 games, if his goal was to sucker me in, well, consider me sucked. Uh, because <laughs> once this goes online, um, it's going to be loads of fun. Yeah, mm. available to us. I need to get you guys. I need to get Tom. I need to get Matthew. We need to like try to play like a battle royale or something to see if that works. Awesome. But yeah, like I'm really excited to see what the future of this game is because it could be really, really bright. I hope it just doesn't burn out really quickly and there's like no more DLC and there's no more. It's just like a one off thing. I hope that's not the case. But because the gameplay is so easy to enjoy, I'm hoping it'll be a big success. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I was just thinking like, 
yeah, if this was came out in 2000, it would change the world <laughs> of wrestling games. World my peace. Goodness. Yeah. I was like, okay, if I was going to recommend it to you, like, if you're buying a wrestling game, do you just want a creative wrestler? If it's, yeah, then just get WWE. But if yeah. you're more interested in just the kind of pure gameplay of it, then you should play this one because it plays great. It's fast, zippy, arcadey action, lots of fun. We'll say, look at the graphics. <laughs> is that a deal breaker for you? Or is the eyes <laughs> burning into your soul? Is that a deal breaker? Because you do get used to it. Like, Do you like your characters to not be derped? <laughs> if so, get 2K23. <laughs> and if not, you get Mass Effect Andromeda. <laughs> 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 but like, yeah, I kind of wish it was uh, they went all out with the cartooniness, kind of WWE All-Star stuff. The mini games, fantastic idea. They need to do a sequel so they have more of these and flesh them out more and that, you know? Because I'm just thinking, this is a, such a solid base yeah. that they built. And I'm just thinking of the possibilities of it as well. It kind of reminds me of like, Horizon 2 where it's just better than Horizon 1 in every way and it's like they need to do another AEW game but you have to start with it anyway so if you have to choose between AEW and Horizon 2 get Horizon 2 <laughs> <laughs> no don't they I hate those games I think they're, they're boring <laughs> but if you want to see Brian Danielson eat a hot dog <laughs> get AEW <laughs> Anyway, fantastic. Thanks so much for being with us today in this super girthy, weighty, deep and meaty and slappy this uh, <laughs> look into AEW Fight Forever has been. So it's a goodbye from V1. Take a boo. And Matt from Muscles. Goodbye, I'm hungry. I need to go eat muffins now. Oh, yeah. Mindy, Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> and myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Matt. Uh, do you have, what have you got to plug for us? What's happening in the world of Matt McMuscles? No, nothing. Nothing. Can you, can you reveal <laughs> any secrets of <laughs> what happened? Uh, yeah, on my channel, you can expect to see a uh, what happened on a little game called Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings, which had a tumultuous development um, because most of the developers were all part time. Uh, they, <laughs> so you can see that uh, probably on the weekend, possibly after you see this. And also I'm probably going to be uh, having my own review of AEW Fight Forever. Or if I don't have enough time for that, a little uh, run of uh, Road to Elite Mode. So. Bit of flop house action. That's about it. Nice. Fantastic. And over on our Patreon, Nogger University, we have... Oh, Kung Fu Hustle just dropped. Oh, uh, what a what a boy of a movie! Absolutely brilliant stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that was so much fun to watch. It's, it's rare to have a nice movie as well. Yeah, because so people normally we get... want us to watch garbage <laughs> instead of the ones that I force you to watch. <laughs> <laughs> really happy with that uh, hard ticket review we did as well. Jeez, that was, we do was a need banger. more cancer snakes. Mm. <laughs> Mortal Kombat 2, you know, the sequel to the reboot one that just came out as well. Oh, and then we can do the so, two of them yeah, at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're on for it, Matt, love to have you on for oh, that. Oh, no, that has, that has to be a Matthew thing. You guys oh, got to yeah, continue that. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, if there's any Mortal Kombat related, if you want to do Conquest or the animated series or... Oh, Conquest has a bunch of wrestlers in it. It does. It, it has Wrath. Okay. He's in, yeah. like really tight pants I think yeah, he's like <laughs> battering people in a forest or something like that it's like a Robin Hood type thing be great stuff yeah oh my god oh mate thanks so much for spending part of your day with us as well taking it out for it lovely chat to you mate uh, my pleasure always um, but yeah when the game actually comes out maybe we can like see what's what's available in the online mode and maybe we could all do something even if it's just for fun and stuff just because I don't know anybody else that's into wrestling <laughs> enough if I, if I ask my friends they'll be just going uh, no I'm good that's fine I'm not gonna buy that I'm like oh okay so uh, yeah maybe we can organize something sounds good we can get some farty pyro going <laughs> we, can have a, we can have an AEW WCW Nitro party and like film it oh my god <laughs> <laughs> There are no women here. 